Well, I thought it'd be kind of interesting to show the press that I use in my garage here. Uh, some of you may recognize this as being the little Harbor Freight 12-ton uh, hydraulic press. Although, as you can see, I've, I've made some upgrades to it. So, uh, I'll, I'll say right up front, I'm not a fan at all of Harbor Freight tools. Um, this may be the only thing I have actually from Harbor Freight. Uh, but I found it used on Craigslist for $30, I think it was. Went over, got it. And I was going to use it to press out uh, the, the rear wheel bearings on my Toyota pickup. Uh, in, pro in the process of attempting to do that, uh, the press basically flexed and shot my axle out of the, the jig I had. Uh, in the process, it bent the original cross pins. These are not the original, these are my upgraded version, which I'll discuss in a minute, but it bent the original pin and this little uh, kind of plate that they give you, which I've since uh, sawn in half. When you get it from Harbor Freight, it's, it's together like this. And this is their little kind of cross table that you, you press stuff down on. So this is supported by the pins. And like I say, when I first went to use it, uh, the press just twisted and kind of came, you know, the seat came off and what have you and, and uh, buckled on me. So I was just getting ready to toss the whole thing into the trash and I thought, well, no, hold on, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe I can come up with some kind of tricky method to strengthen it because because really, this part of the press up here, you can see, is pretty pretty well made. Um, this is it comes with a little a little handle which I took a, a rod and kind of lengthened to give me some more leverage. But in looking at it, I realized that well, you know, this part and the bottle jack and you know this affair here actually functions okay. The 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 problem was how they set up things down here. So if you look, obviously this is, uh, these are press plates that I've purchased off eBay. If you go in there and you, you search shop press, you can find, it's just uh, mild steel, uh, A36 steel, uh, which is, you know, not the best steel in the world, but when you've got an inch of it thick, it it doesn't want to bend too too much under 12 pan, uh, 12 tons of pressure. Now I wouldn't recommend using um, some of this stuff for 200 tons, but if you're just dealing with you know 12 or 20 tons, you're probably okay. Um, so what I ended up doing, I'll to take this stuff off here, and you can buy these little guys off eBay. Uh, the press itself when you buy it from Harbor Freight, it comes with kind of a version of this that is cast, but I would not recommend it because uh, if you apply any serious, you know, pressing force to cast the iron, it has a bad habit of shattering. So, you can kind of see what I've done here. I, I had a company back east uh, cut me this plate. So this is a three-quarter inch thick uh, plasma cut plate and then I just gave them the dimensions I wanted and then I got a and you'd be surprised how inexpensively you can get some of this stuff done I think I had this whole plate cut and delivered for not more than about 90 or 100 bucks and then you can kind of see I'll try to lift this up it weighs about probably weighs about 75 pounds so you can see the crossbars I have here. So what I've done is made this the kind of main cross support. And you can see, I think it's 3 8 plate steel. And it's about three inches by, you know, 20 inches or something like that. And then these here is kind of really another major part of the upgrade. So if you look closely, you can see that I enlarged the original factory holes 
up to three quarters of an inch. And then what I did was I just went on eBay and I bought some three quarter inch by, I think it was six or something inch, chromoly cross pins. So these are 4140 chromoly and at three quarters of an inch, it's gonna take a heck of a lot of force the way I have it set up to, to start bending things. So it's real nice from the standpoint that I can just quickly move these pins and drop these plates and I'm just, I haven't built an affair to clamp them in so I'm just using some C clamps. But you can see when you mix, you know, a three quarter inch thick mild steel plate and then you start stacking some of these guys on top of it, you've got a pretty strong affair when it comes to the shop press. This thing is, you know, 12 tons, 10 tons, something like that, which for home use or even mild shop work is, is more than adequate. The thing I like really a lot about it is it's, it's very compact, you know, comparatively speaking. A, normally a, a 10 ton shop press is gonna be a little bit more husky. This, this you can actually just throw it in the back of an SUV if you need to take it somewhere. And then I'll show you some of the other little things I have here. Uh, I have just a, a big plate here for general use if I need to kind of close down that hole. Uh, another thing that comes in super handy around here is uh, hockey pucks, believe it or not. And you can just buy these by the dozen on Amazon. Uh, I use these things all the time when I need a little bit of a cushion. Or I used to use them quite a bit uh, jacking up the Ferrari and also sticking them under the frame rails on like the pickup truck and stuff to kind of protect from, you know, damaging things with the floor jack. They also come in handy with the, the shop press here. And then I have also a steel version of a hockey puck, which is just a one inch by three inch A36 steel. And, and again, you can, you can get these off of eBay for little or nothing. I think I paid maybe $3 or $4 a piece for these things. And they come in real handy. You can stack them up, you know, for your pressing needs and get in little tight spaces. Um, I also have uh, some of these bars, as I showed before, which are good. You can kind of stand them up this way or that way and, you know, raise or lower your work. Uh, also, it's handy to have one of these, uh, a gear splitter. This thing comes in super handy. This is a clone of a Snap-on Tools. Uh, forget the name. I think it's a 915 uh, Snap-on. It's real popular, but you, you can kind of Google around or check on eBay. And, uh, you often see the heavy-duty Snap-on ones for sale. I think this one came off of eBay or Amazon. I'll see if I can scrounge up the the original link, but it it's real handy when it comes to you know kind of getting into tight little areas where you kind of need to get in under like a a gear or something or a bearing and start pressing on it. Let's see what else we got here? Uh, just miscellaneous stuff. This is an old flange off a. Of, uh, pinion flange off uh, from a differential that sometimes kind of comes in handy when you need to you know press out a little sleeve or a bearing and then I have a collection of uh, just miscellaneous stuff that sometimes helps me out uh, these believe it or not are just the races uh, from old wheel bearings uh, you just you separate the cage and roll all the bearings to one side and pop out the center uh, race here's the center race so you can see you know originally ball bearings all around there but you run all the ball bearings to one side and then just kind of push this little guy down and it'll pop apart that's actually how they manufacture the uh, the wheel bearings originally so this for example uh, is a real helpful piece because it's very good steel and it has a diameter that it matches you know the bearing that you're pushing in you can see, for example, over here, I've got these guys marked with yellow because what I've done is, this one, for example, is for a Toyota uh, rear axle shaft. 
So that what the yellow means is I've taken a couple thousands off the inner diameter so that it will it'll chase down over the shaft where I'm pressing the new bearing on. So that's kind of and then here's a, another little collar, same deal. I've taken out a couple thousandths with a, a little grinding wheel on the inside so I can slide that down and press on top of it. And I forget what the, oh, this is a, I think this is a, a race um, out of a throwout bearing, believe it or not. So it comes in handy because, you know, just sometimes you need something to kind of slip in there to press with. So a few different little things, and I have kind of a collection of, you know, just quarter-inch plates in case I need to uh, add, add a little extra thickness to the mix. But for anyone who's interested in getting themselves a little press, uh, this is one possible thing. Like I say, just uh, Harbor Freight and beef up the cross plate here with a little bit of plate steel. Uh, drill... Uh, Drilling out these holes was kind of a nuisance. I used one of those step drills and then I uh, went through and then I just took a, one of those deburring tools and kind of smoothed it up and got it uh, opened up. I think I actually used a uh, reamer to kind of true the holes up and get a real good fit there. So chromoly cross pins and some heavy duty plate steel and that really makes kind of night and day difference when it comes to uh, making this more of a serious sort of uh, shop press compared to you know how it is out of the box from Harbor Freight. So Harbor Freight gets you on the road and then uh, beefing it up really takes it from kind of you know a, almost a toy to uh, more of kind of a serious uh, press for the shop. So I thought uh, subscribers to the channel might get a kick out seeing kind of what I use around here when it comes to pressing bearings and shafts and things like that in and out. Okay, well if you have any questions feel free to use the comment section below if the video has been of interest to you. Click the like button there for me. And as always, thanks for watching.